Today I want to talk with you about resonators and to understand what resonators are first we need to take um, a little bit of a close look at comb filters because a resonator is basically a combination or a set of comb filters and we can find resonators in a lot of places we can find them in Ableton which has an effect simply called resonator um, we can find them in guitar rig by native instruments but like I said let's let's first take a look at a comb filter um, I've talked about this before, but just in case you don't know um, anything about it yet, we'll just go over it very quickly. So what a comb filter is, basically, is not a filter at all. It's a delay. And with a regular delay unit, such as the stereo delay in Logic, we can actually create comb filter-like effects. Because the way a comb filter creates its tone is by taking the inputted audio and feedbacking it back into the input and the delay between um, it going into the input and then looping back, we set that with the delay time. And normally on a comb filter, you would set that with the, um, it's often called frequency. Because if we're using very small um, delay times, we're actually gonna hear a new tone. So let's first start with a regular delay in case you forgot what that sounds like. So let's just take one, um, one drum hit, this one kick drum. So that's our normal delay. Now let's let's see what happens if we start making these delay times shorter and shorter. So at this point, we almost don't recognize it as a delay anymore. It's too fast. Now let's see what happens if we increase the feedback here. And the feedback is just the level of the signal going back to the input. So it's it's the signal level actually. And there we start hearing our tone. So this is what a comb filter does as well. It's, it can create a tone out of something that doesn't have a tone to begin with. Because if we bypass this and just listen to that kick drum, of course, it has a tone like every sound, but it doesn't have a very recognizable pitch. As soon as we um, switch on this delay or sort of custom made comb filter, we get that tone in there, which we can actually check with a uh, tuner right here. And tuner thinks it's somewhere close to F sharp. Now with this delay time, we can actually tune this filter and we can make it play back different tones. So let's set that them both to 20 milliseconds. So it's going to be a G sharp. Now let's try 60 milliseconds. That's going to be a C. Let's go for 9. So it's a sh kind of a sharp A. So with just any regular delay, we can we can already make a comb filter. Other places where you can find comb filters are um, Waves have, has one in their uh, meta filter. Uh, Massive has one built in. Serum has a lot of cool comb filters built in. So that's a comb filter. A comb filter is one part of a resonator. And like I said before, a resonator is a bank of comb filters. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to open Guitar Rig for that. But like I said, you can use whatever you want for this really. Um, but I just happen to like this one in Guitar Rig. So if we open up Guitar Rig and we go to Pitch, we find this Reso chord here. And Resochord is a classic resonator effect. It has two major modes. It has a chord mode and a string mode. Now, if we put it to chord mode, like what it is right now, we can, um, with the chord here, we can choose a just a normal chord style. So we can choose a fifth or to have a seventh in there, to have a nine in there and a sharp 11. So that's going to be our, our chord uh, type. And then here we have our chord family, like major, minor, diminished, etc. So let's set this to, I don't know, um, a minor chord, just a regular minor triad. So now we can hear that with this, we can actually create a chord out of that kick drum, which is super cool. Here's my favorite reason to use resonators and comb filters. 
is because you can make unpitched material suddenly pitched. So you can take sounds that are super cool, like um, for example, a roar of a tiger or a lion or animal sounds or like weird stuff like that. And you can make them into something musical. You can tune them into, into chords or tones. And you can actually make melodies with those sounds, which uh, provides you with a lot of freedom because now you can just take whatever sound you want and you'll make it into something, into something musical. As another example of that, uh, let's take this kick drum and let's actually stretch it and make it a lot longer. Now, the reason I'm choosing kick drums here um, it's partly to prove the point that you can use whatever sound you want, but it's also because they have a lot of low frequencies. And all plugins, all audio effects will behave more extreme on low frequencies. And the reason for that is that low frequencies are perceived to be louder by the computer or by the system. Um, if we take a look at an equalizer when we play, um, let's take this full loop again. We can always see that the low end there is quite, I can actually freeze this. We can see that the low end is quite high, quite high in level. While to us, we don't really perceive that, we don't hear this as that loud. We hear this area the loudest. Um, but for like digital systems, the low frequencies are always louder. So the reason I'm taking a kick drum there is that I know that these effects will behave very extremely to those low frequencies. Same is true for distortions and a whole, uh, compressors, a whole bunch of other effects. Uh, all right, that being said, let's take our kick drum and let's stretch it and let's make it a little bit longer. Um, in Logic, if you press Command F, you go into audio stretch mode. It's this symbol at the top right here. In Ableton, you have the same way you can choose between complex, complex pro, beat, etc. These are all methods to actually change the length of the audio and most of them try to maintain the pitch. So I'm going to choose this monophonic mode and I'll make my kick drum something like that. So that's the kick drum if we really stretch it out. We have also a polyphonic mode which sounds a bit smoother. And we have speed. Speed will actually, this is the only one that doesn't affect the audio quality, um, but it will actually change the pitch. So now this becomes a very low sound. And we don't hear those low frequencies anymore. If I open my equalizer again, and I unfreeze it, this is a perfect way to, to tune your kick drums if you go less extreme. Um, if you take a look at the low frequencies, you can see them sort of shifting. If, if I make this file shorter, it should move, those low frequencies should move more to the right. All right, but for now, um, I'm not gonna use the speed mode. I'm gonna use this uh, monophonic mode. And then I'm going to, so right now it sounds like this. And then I'm going to use my resonator and I'll put a tuner after that so we can see the resulting pitch. So first um, I'll set this to a string mode. So the string mode is a little bit different than the chord mode. It's actually a little bit simpler. The chord actually uses multiple comb filters to produce multiple tones. The string is just a single tone. So we can set the note right here. We can set it to a C for example. Uh, then, we, then we set the style, which is sort of, it's sort of the color. Um, this this affects the input filter and that greatly changes the sound. And we have the decay, which is sort of similar to the sustain. The more decay you will give it, the more tone you'll get. So let's try this uh, C2 first. So now you start here that we can get a lot of different colors out of that. Um, we can try making this a little bit less extreme um, and maybe try one of the other modes. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if we try this in combination with a bit of distortion, things can get really extreme. So let's try it two ways. Let's try to put the distortion before the resonator, which will sound like this. That's really cool. Now let's try it after the resonator. So now the distortion will actually affect that resonated signal. All right, now let's try Let's see, let's do one more stretch algorithm. Let's make this a little bit shorter still. And let's try to go for speed. So you can get some really gritty dark sounds from that, especially if you put a bunch of reverb after that. Let's go for uh, impulse response reverb because they can sound very realistic and very rich. Um, and very dark as well, which is what I'm going for. Uh, let's go for big halls, and I happen to like this one, the um, fat hall. If you're not into these like very dark sounds, um, there's an, there's another thing that you can do. Um, I'll show you that in one second. I just want to try to see what this looks like if we also add another hit in there, like that one. Uh, that's probably going to be a snare. Um, so another thing I did here, just as an example, is to um, use a bunch of these resonators and actually use them sort of in a chain. So what I have right here is a slightly more complicated setup. Basically, uh, we can remove this. Basically what you see right here is a container and a container is just in guitar rig, um, sort of a module to combine other modules. So, I've used that container and I used multiple of these reserve chord effects. In fact, I used uh, four different ones of them. And then I've used these analog sequencers. Now what these analog sequencers do, these are just modulated. We can see that little light going on there at the bottom. And this is just controlling the resonator mix. Um, so if we take a look here at the resonator mix and we right click on that, we can see that it's being modified by this analog sequencer um, just for 100%. So if I switch off all the resonators except the first one, um, we can see what that does. You can see there the mix going up for these first steps and then it goes down. So only this first, um, only this first part of this whole sequence, this resonator will be on. So I'm using these in series. This is the first one that um, where the mix goes on, then this is the second one, etc. And all are set to a different chord. Um, so without any further explaining, I'll just switch these on so you can actually hear what that sounds like. So that's our um, drum loop. So without the resonators, it's going to sound like this. And then here with the with just the first resonator again. That's pretty cool, right? So we're giving this the um, a minor chord in the key of C. So it's gonna give a C minor chord here. And then the second chord is going to be a G chord, um, also a minor.
And then I have one other resonator here. Uh, sorry, another one here, which is going to be a... Uh, we can see that right now. So sometimes guitar rig loses its values. That's fine. So this is the last one that plays. I don't really like this one. Let's see if we can uh, make it into something a little bit different. It's probably a little bit too high. Uh, let's try and set it to C as well. Change the style a bit. So um, I hope that gives you some new ideas. It's definitely, it, for me, it's always super inspirational to work with these. If you don't have guitar rig, try Ableton's resonator. If you don't have Ableton, try uh, reactors. Um, Reactor has plenty of resonator effects. And remember that first thing, where we can actually make it ourselves with just any, any delay. So if you have this delay, I'll show you the settings one more time. If you have a delay like this, this one is even cooler because it's a stereo delay, meaning that we can make two different tones, one for the left and one for the right channel. Um, and I have a lot of presets here for like comb filters. Um, so these are these are healthy settings to, to create that pitch. First take a look at the timing, which should be very short. Um, you should always unsync this, um, unsync this delay. So it's not gonna be synced to your host tempo and then you set the feedback very high. That's pretty much it. And then you can do all sorts of cool stuff uh, like this, right? I hope that gives you some new ideas and see you in another video. The Pyramind Mentorship Network connects you to experienced professionals for truly customized private training in music production, sound design, music business, and more. Use our scheduling tool to select the type of training you want, pick your mentor, find a day and time that works best for you, then book your session. Your appointment will be confirmed instantly. Study only what you want, progress at your own pace, pay as you go, and do it all from the comfort of your home or studio. Our global network of industry experts are here to help you. Visit pyramind.com mentorship to get started.